welcome to Nyonya Cooking. I hope you enjoyed my previous video about my visit to Old China Cafe in Kuala Lumpur. They serve very good authentic Nyonya cuisines and at the end of the video I introduced to you a few variations of Nyonya desserts. One of it is Bubo Cha Cha. Bubo refers to the word Kongi or porridge in Malay and Cha Cha refers to dancing. So this dessert does not only sound fun but it is very colourful and delicious. So I'm going to show you the right ingredients to prepare this dessert and with the right taste you'll be dancing while eating this dessert. I have here about 140 grams of taro and then you will need at least two different types of sweet potatoes. I have the purple one over here and then the yellow sweet potato. And for each sweet potato you will need about 70 grams. And another ingredient which will add sweetness to your dessert would be a banana. Then I have here sago, 40 grams of sago, 50 grams of water, and about 80 grams of tapioca flour. We add the water to the tapioca flour to do a dough and then color it with red food coloring and green food coloring. So I have here also about 160 grams of sugar, 250 grams of coconut milk, and here three pandan leaves, which is also known as screw pine leaves. So if you're in Singapore or Malaysia, you might realize that they have it in uh, cars or taxis and some even use it at home to add fragrance to your house. So you do not only add this to your food but also to your home area. Last but not least, some salt for taste. So let's get started. So 70 grams of yellow sweet potato and 70 grams of purple sweet potato. I'm going to put it all on a plate together with the taro and I'm going to steam this sweet potato and taro together. I'm going to leave it for about 20 minutes until it gets cooked. As you can see I have some boiling water in this pot and this is where my sago is going to go into. So it should cook until it is translucent. While waiting for the sweet potatoes and the taro to steam and the sago to boil, we can just begin with our banana. So what we're going to do here is just cut it into smaller pieces, bite pieces. Now it's after 20 minutes, we're going to see if this is ready. Just stick a fork and cook. Yep, it's ready. You will know that your sago is ready to cook when everything is translucent. So just put it through a sieve and collect Translucent sago. After draining all the water out from the sago and it's still hot, it's going to cool down for a while, but then it will get very sticky together. So, what you do is just add cold water into a bowl, then just separate them together, uh, separate them away from each other. And this way, your sago will not be that sticky. So to prepare the dough, remember to use very very hot boiling water and add it to your tapioca flour. The water has to be boiling hot or else the tapioca flour will not make into will not come together as a dough. Now that the dough uh, has already cooled down, we will just separate it into two to add some colors. And you see the nice beautiful green colour spreading all over to the dough. The green dough is ready and now to work on to the red dough. Once again you just need to flatten this down. You can either make it thin or thicker, it's up to you. So remember to stir from time to time or else the tapioca jellies will get stuck to the bottom of the pot. Now we're going to transfer all of them into a bowl of cold water. So just like the sago, the cold water will um, stop these uh, tapioca jellies from getting stuck together. So because we want it to be all nicely separated here, as you can see, it's just so colourful and beautiful. Now we'll move on to the next thing. So over here I have about 250 ml of water. Just add half first. The thing about dessert is that you do not, some people like it to be really sweet and some do not really like it to be too sweet. So just play safe. I would always put half of the intended sugar 
and then I'll just decide because from the sweet potato and the other um, ingredients like the banana is already sweet. Now I'm going to mix the pandan leaf together with the sugar. So it's going to be this uh, sugary syrup with very nice pandan smell. Just put it on low heat and allow it to simmer for a while. So by now you should be able to smell the nice fragrant pandan leaves. What we're going to do here next is to just add coconut milk, all of it. You can always add a little bit more, more water or a bit more sugar, lesser sugar. It really depends on your own preference. So um, with the santan, just add a little bit of salt. Now that the santan and the syrup is getting um, hotter, it's boiling up, we'll put in this sweet potatoes and taro. And remember we had this sago? So I drain all the water and I'm going to put it inside too. And not to forget the tapioca jellies. Stir from time to time. Remember to keep the heat medium and not hot, uh, not high because you do not want the santan to start boiling and then there will be bubbles and all. And last but not least, do not forget to put in your banana. Because bananas are already soft, I'm going to put it right at the end. And just allow it to cook and simmer. It doesn't need to be cooked too long. About 10 minutes will be fine to 20 minutes. You do not want it to be too soft too. Okay, now it's nicely cooked. I'm going to just scoop it over to this nice bowl. Ah, oh, it smells so good. Just can smell the banana and the sweet potatoes with the nice coconut milk. And our bubu cha cha is finally completed. So I'm going to show you how it's how it tastes like, unfortunately, I cannot um, make you taste it, but I'm going to taste it for you. So let's see. So it's not that thick, as you can see, the consistency is still quite fluid. Mmm! You can really taste the banana taste and, of course, the santan. I hope you're going to try this recipe and let me know what you think. Do a little bit of tutsi and that. It doesn't need to be according to the recipe exactly um, as you wish. And I wish you all the best and happy cooking. Okay.